Hi, my name is Zai, longtime gamer and amateur music producer. You can use any headphones and play fairly well. You can even make decent enough music and enjoy movies. So the first thing you should do when buying a headset is decide what you want to use them for. If you're a music producer or someone who wants music as it was intended, you want the cleanest sound possible. If you're a casual user wanting extra entertainment, you want headphones that focus on experience rather than accuracy. And of course, if you're gaming and talking to people, you need a microphone too. This is the Corsair Void RGB headset with microphone and 7.1 surround sound. The sound is wide, so it fits more into the entertainment category. The microphone is a problem on this headset though. It's actually extremely quiet. If you look on the Corsair forums, they've known about this for over a year and haven't done anything about it. Thankfully, the community has found a way to fix it. I'll leave the instructions in the description. Now here is a test using the microphone, boosted by 20 dB. Hello, how are you today? As you can see in the waveform, the background noise is very well controlled, but the pops and brusts are a bit too audible. Otherwise, the mic quality sounds decent, with a fairly accurate representation of my voice. But it could really do with some filters and a mic gain option. And of course, when I say fairly accurate, I mean for a headset microphone. I'm not sure of the logic behind creating a headset without focusing on the microphone, but we shouldn't have to load a third-party program to fix it. So I really encourage Corsair to address these issues as soon as possible. For the actual sound you hear back, these have two modes, stereo and Dolby 7.1 surround sound. According to the box, the frequency response is 20Hz to 20kHz, impedance is 32 ohms at 1kHz, and the sensitivity is 107 dB. As it's geared more toward entertainment, I think by default they've raised the bass, as when I was trying to get the levels right in my mastering, I kept turning the high range up too much. To get it sounding more flat, I had to lower the bass and raise the treble, but left the mid-range. You can adjust this to your liking in the software, and I'd recommend setting up a mode for stereo and a separate one for Dolby Surround. But as I love bass, for entertainment, I actually really enjoyed using these. I just wouldn't use them for mixing and mastering, but of course, they're great in games, movies, and for just general listening to music and the max volume is too high for me to listen to. Now for the bleeding test, to check how much the outside world can hear of what you're hearing with them on. This is what it sounds like with the headset held in front of the microphone. And now this is what it sounds like in front of the mic while I'm wearing them. So even without hearing it, you can see a considerable drop in volume, meaning the bleed is well controlled. How they look isn't too important, but if you have a special setup on your desk, you want the headset to match. These have a stylish look, with some cool angles that follow the shape of the ears. Most of it is matte plastic, but it has some glossy plastic on the ear cups for the logos, and it has breathable padding around the cups and headband. The mic is on a flexible rubber arm that holds its shape. The cable is grippy rubber, fairly awkward, and it's a bit short for a headset but if you get it set up right, it might stay out of the way. Not an exact measurement, but I think it's about six feet, and they weigh about 350 grams. For comfort, I was able to wear these for hours and they felt fairly good. There's only a light clamping force. They hang a little loosely, but that's probably why they're comfortable. And when I leaned forward to check my computer, they did start to fall off. For general use though, they stayed where they were meant to. With glasses on, they felt about the same, as the soft material accommodates for the frame. Inside the ear cups is 5.5cm, and they're about 10.5cm in total. And the band gives 3.5cm extension on both sides. In the software, you have the microphone volume as well as the side tone. Side tone is so you can hear yourself speaking. If you hear some white noise while nothing is happening, it's probably because the side tone is turned up. So make sure that's off. They give you an equalizer, and as I said, I had to lower the bass and turn the higher range up to get it sounding more flat. The Dolby Surround is what gives you the 7.1, which I like to leave on for the entertainment value. And in lighting, there aren't too many options. Just brightness and intervals of the mic LED, and then brightness of the main LED. The effects available are solid color, blinking and breathing, and a rainbow pulse mode. But there is no smooth gradient option, which would have been good. No real extra features, just a big mute button for the microphone on the left, and a volume control. In conclusion, this is a decent set of headphones that kind of hits the middle mark. Obviously, it's not the highest quality, but with some minor adjustments to the sound, it really is enjoyable. I wouldn't use it for mixing or mastering tracks, but for movies, games, and general use, it's good. My one big complaint is the mic volume and the popping and the lack of filters in general. Hope that helps. If you want to buy a set of these, I'll leave links in the description to Amazon and also M-Wave in Australia. Special thanks to Corsair for sending this out for review and a shout out to Chris Mayer-Smith, Corsair's Australian representative. You can follow him on Twitter for esports, PC, and Corsair news. 
Also check the description for other information, subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.